Hey guys, uh, this is Raghu Reddy here and welcome to the show. On this episode, I have an awesome guest. Her name is Lime Navara. Lime, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Sir Raghu, for inviting me to join you today. It's a pleasure. It's wonderful, wonderful, fantastic. And thanks for being on the show. So, uh, Lime, uh, where are you located? I am located in Bacolod City in the Philippines. That's awesome. So, uh, what do you do, Lime? Uh, I am a financial advisor and an agency manager. So, I lead a team of unit managers and financial advisors. And we aim to uplift the lives of our fellow Filipinos through financial literacy. Wow, that's awesome. Awesome. So, since how many years uh, have you been into financial advising? I have been in the industry for a total of five years. Wow, that's fantastic. Awesome. So what made you to become a financial advisor? It's actually quite a long story, but I will tell it in the most, uh, in the fastest, in the shortest possible way. So um, I never forget to tell both my clients and my new financial advisors joining my team about this story because this is where I draw strength from. So I did not imagine to be in sales ever. Um, I'm a mass communications graduate and at that time I wanted to do films or get into advertising. And I'm also a registered nurse. So I thought that my career path was towards the healthcare sector. However, my heart settled for this industry because I am a beneficiary of a life insurance policy. So it was in the late 1980s when my father, he was a new dad at that time, he decided to sign up for a policy. And little did we know that two years later, he would make us beneficiaries. So he, he left to work overseas. He was a firefighter. And uh, in one of the calls, in one of the fire calls that they responded to, the fire truck crashed and my dad was thrown off the vehicle so my mom she said that she will never forget that call informing us of what happened so i was just four years old at that time and we were informed that a few days after the accident my my father passed away and what made it more devastating for us was it was a false alarm there was actually no fire and it's hard to accept the fact that it could have been avoided, but life has no rewind button and we are all designed to move forward. So I became a financial advisor because I will always be grateful to the financial advisor who made my father understand that once you are a parent, life insurance is non-negotiable. And because of that financial advisor, I was able to finish school and here I am uh, paying it forward eventually. Wow, that's really awesome, awesome, fantastic, fantastic. So, as you started out as a financial advisor, I'm sure that you faced a lot of challenges uh, coming into this new field. So, uh, how, how did you overcome those challenges? Um, there were actually a lot of, of challenges, but um, especially now, and you no, know, at first glance, it felt like the business needed revival i initially thought that the business will come crashing along with everything else so the pandemic right now is actually is actually what i consider as the biggest obstacle or the biggest problem that we have encountered as financial advisors but i realized that it, this is more than just a business it's an advocacy and people need protection and security now more than ever so the financial, financial advisors in my team, myself included, we had to ride an emotional and mental roller coaster as the virus was becoming more real to us. So some advisors also struggled with digitalization. And it took a while for, uh, for a lot of us to bring our business from the usual face-to-face -face contact to actually making sure that we still provided that personal touch even if we are now behind a computer screen. So our company was very quick to pivot. And a few days 
after the lockdown, we already had a digital process that was ready to roll. And realizing our importance as people protectors, it allowed our personal business to flourish. And when I say flourish, it means that we are empowering and securing more individuals and families at this time. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic. So whenever you face any barrier, so how do you overcome that? So what really drives you? What's your driving force? I actually just go back to my why. Every single time that I find it hard to connect to people or every single time that, you know, I have to to change um, a certain habit to accommodate a new one that will help me with the business. I just uh, try to remind myself why I started in the first place. And it's to make sure that no child ever will have to experience drastic lifestyle changes because of the death of a parent or a disability maybe. Wow, that's awesome, awesome. So is there a specific group of uh, people that you serve? Oh yes, um, I actually, it, there was a time that uh, in my career that I was just catering to everyone and well, it's not a bad thing. In fact, it was good for business. However, I realized that by choosing a niche, I will be able to become a champion people protector of a specific demographic. So at present, I am currently serving frontliners in general because um, I am a registered nurse. And I'm also catering <coughs> to young parents and parents-to-be. Wow. Awesome. So these are my clientele for now. Awesome, awesome, fantastic. So during this uh, crisis, during this lockdown period, so uh, what have you been doing? Um, initially, I got scared at the thought of an unseen enemy. So I was scared for my friends, especially my family. So I live with senior citizens and babies at home. And I was sure that I will not go out and risk bringing home the deadly virus. So however, I realized at that time that it was okay to feel that way. And I turned my fear into action. So I decided to connect with my team more we did not use the usual webinar platforms initially such as zoom because i realized that it would uh, cause more stress to figure out how these things work so we just used our usual means of communication and little by little we drew strength from each other we decided to go through the process according to our own face so we were fast enough to be able to take care of our clients but we took it slow as well so that we will be able to take care of ourselves. So what we did was we went back to basics. We had team huddles that focused on the how-tos. And in that dark instant, I had a light bulb moment. So maybe this crisis is meant to teach us to never forget the fundamentals, no matter how technologically advanced we become. So the core of this business is having the heart to serve authenticity and genuine concern for our clients and those things will always break the barrier that is behind a computer wow that's awesome fantastic fantastic so so you said you have a team so how big is your team right now we are about 73 financial advisors in my team although some of them are doing the business part-time and um, just a, quite a number of us are doing it full-time for now. Wow, that's, that's a huge team. Fantastic. Awesome. Okay, so you said you have such a huge team. So there's always a challenge, uh, you know, in uh, managing your team. So uh, how's your team, uh, you know, um, uh, gearing up to meet the challenges of the future? Um, in terms of numbers, uh, when the when the pandemic when the pandemic started, I did not dwell on the numbers so much. I wanted to just take care of our existing clients and my existing team. And it actually just starts with the acceptance of the current situation and knowing when and how to pivot to turn adversity into an opportunity. And the financial advisors in the team, we need to be more sensitive of how the needs of our clients 
change according to the current situation. So when we were able to pinpoint that need, because the need right now is more on protection, we were able to convey the importance of securing that need and our, our advocacy continues even during this crisis. Wow, that's awesome. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So what's your personal vision for the future? Personal vision for the future? Um, actually, people take on this job for its noble purpose, but it doesn't change the vital fact that we plunge into the insurance industry because we want to earn. And I see myself in, in, in the industry for a long time. In fact, I cannot envision myself to be not doing, to be doing something else. So I am grateful for the chance to provide for my family by helping breadwinners and parents do the same for theirs. And I think that's just beautiful to be able to do that. Wow, awesome. Fantastic, fantastic. So if someone wants your services, how they can contact you? I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn. The name is Lime Navara. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. It's called Wealth Experts Bacolod. Uh, Wealth Experts is spelled without an E. So it's W-E-A-L-T-H X-P-E-R-T-S Bacolod. And I really hope to connect with everyone. Wow, that's good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So what would be your advice uh, to a newcomer into this field? Um, if you're a newcomer, the knowledge and skills will come as we undergo various trainings and apply what we have learned to the actual setup. So my advice is to truly have the heart to serve and put the client's interest before our own. So when your why is to add value to the people around you by giving them the information that they need to have a more secure future, then you are in the right track. So it will get hard because if it were easy, then everybody would be doing this. But when your purpose is clear to you, you can always remind yourself why you started in the, per in the first place. So have the heart for it and be inspired on a daily basis. And I cannot see any reason why you will not make it in this industry. Wow, that's awesome. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Lime, it was uh, really great talking to you. And uh, you have a fantastic vision there. And uh, you're making such a big difference in people's lives. So I wish you all the very best for your future. Keep continuing to make uh, the difference and keep growing your team so that you can make a bigger difference. And I wish you all the very best for your future. Thank you so much, Sir Raghu. Yeah, th thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you.